Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, I'm going to ask all the mothers and fathers to step aside for a minute. I want to talk to the young folks who listen to Lum and Abner. I want to tell them what a swell summer drink Horlicks is, how cool and refreshing it is, and how easy to make. All you have to do, you know, to get a regular chocolate malted milk is to mix some Horlicks chocolate malted milk powder with cold water or milk, and it's ready to serve. Simple, isn't it? Tell Mother how wholesome and nourishing Horlicks is, and ask her to get some for you. She can get a package at the drugstore, Horlicks Chocolate Malted Milk. Or, if you prefer it, she can get it for you in natural flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Professor Willoughby, the voice teacher from New York City who is visiting Squire Skimp, has the citizens of Pine Ridge enthused over the glamour of society. In a few short days, he has transferred their interests from horseshoe pitching and old-fashioned box suppers to contract bridge and afternoon teas. And all the while, Squire and Lum are busy selling stock in their new mining venture with the promise that they will all become millionaires. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Squire Skimp over at Lum's house after just having returned from the county seat with a brand new outfit for the president of the company. Listen. No, no, Lum, that looks all right. Uh, Professor Willoughby picked it all out himself. Well, I guess he knows his style's all right, but I, Danny, I feel like a little boy with knee pants on this way. Oh, no, no, lots of men wear knickers for sport wear that way, Lum. Yeah, but these socks, they the loudest things i ever seen. Red and green and yellow and everything else. Oh, well, man. now, that's just what you want, old Lum. We want you to attract attention. You've got to set the styles here in Pine Ridge. Folks here are all looking up to you as a social leader. Well, I ain't a complaining, Squire. I appreciate you buying them for me. I just ain't used to wearing fancy clothes this way. Yeah, well, now, put the cap on, Lum. Let's see how the whole work looks there. Cap? Yeah. You mean this, this thing here? Yes, sir, that's what they call a beret, Lum. Go ahead, put it on. Oh, Squire, I can't wear no such thing as that. <laughs> that looks like a little girl's cap. No, it just completes your outfit, Lum. Looks nice with that polo shirt and all. Well, I'll wear it if you say to, but I know I'm going to get a terrible joshing when I go out on the street with this rigging on. Why, you'll be setting the fashions here in Pine Ridge, Lum. Now, mind what I tell you. They'll be copying me, huh? Yes, uh, <laughs> only th- one thing wrong with the whole outfit, Lum, and that's those shoes. The shoes? Yes, they kind of spoil it. I don't like those. Well, I like them better than anything you bought for me. Comfortest things I ever had on my feet. Well, yes, but you should have had sports shoes, Lum. We couldn't find any big enough for you, so we had to get those tennis shoes. These is tennis shoes, huh? Yes, yes, that's what they call. Well, what am I supposed to be playing here anyway? I've got on tennis shoes and golf breeches and a polo shirt and... Which one am I, anyway? Well, uh, you're just an all-around sportsman, I'd say, Lum. Hot dog. Play them all, huh? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> just an all-around athletic. Yes, uh, Professor Willoughby's got some great plans for you socially, Lum. He said that you're a natural society leader. Uh, Professor Willoughby said that about yes, it? Yes, yes. Told me that this morning. He, he's taking quite a liking to you. Well, good for him. He knows society rules, I'll say that for him. Yes, if he'll just listen to him, well, he'll have just as high a type of society here in Pine Ridge as you'll find anywhere in the country. And the more social functions we have, the better it is for our silver mining company, too. It is. Why, yes, that's uh, what I brought the professor and his wife here for, was to promote society. Oh, you brung him in here, huh? Oh, yes, yes. I thought he'd just come in here to visit you for the summer. Well, of course, that's what we're telling, but... Uh, you might as well know now, Lum. I'm paying him a salary to stay here and get everybody interested in society. Well, see, I knew if we got this FFPR and a few other social organizations started and uh, limited the membership to those that own stock in the silver mining company, well, it wouldn't be long before they'd all want to buy some stock to get in society. Well, I do know. Well, that's just the way it's a panning out, all right, but I never knowed he would have done that away on a purpose. Oh, yes, I had this all planned out long before I talked to you about going in with me, Lum. Oh, yeah. And we're not good and started yet. For long, we're going to organize some clubs that'll be a little more exclusive than those we've got now. They'll have to buy a little more stock to get in those. That'll give you a chance to go right back to those same people and tell them some more stock. Yeah, I don't want to sell them too much, though. Well, I want to congratulate you, Lum, on the fine job you've been doing. 
I picked you out for president of the company because I knew you was a man that they all had confidence in. And the way it turned out, I certainly didn't make a mistake. Well, Squire, uh, uh, you're, you're sure they silver out there in that mine all right, ain't you? Oh, my, yes. Worlds of it. Worlds of it. I showed you some of the ore come out of it, Lum. Solid silver. You looked at it yourself. Yeah. Well, I'd hate mighty bad if these friends of mine bought this stock on my recommendation and then it never turned out so good. Lots of them are putting up every nickel they've got. Some of them's even borrowing money to buy it. I'd hate to see them lose. Why, of course you would, Lum. I would, too. They're my friends, too, you know. They're my neighbors. Yeah, that's right. i tell you what let's do, Squire. Before we sell any more stock, let's go on out there in Arizona and start digging some of that silver out of the mine and sell it. No, no, now, Lum, we don't want to touch that mine until we've got all the stock sold. We want the company completely organized before we begin operations. We want to have a board of directors and all officers elected first, you know. You got to do all that first, huh? Oh, yes, yes. It wouldn't be fair to the stockholders to elect officers and directors before all the stock is placed. And uh, before we know who all's going to be connected with the company. Yeah, I reckon that's right. Yes, now, don't you hesitate a minute about selling your friends all this stock they'll buy. The more you sell them, the more they'll make. And the more you'll make. Don't forget, I'm paying you 10% for every dollar's worth of stock you sell. And that just reminds me, too, I've got a check here in my pocket for you, Tom. Where? I figured up a while ago what your commission's run to up to date. Uh, there. Uh, there's my check for $205. Uh, have I made that much already? Yes, sir, that's not a bad week's work, is it? I granny, this is a gold mine instead of a silver mine. <laughs> uh, now, yeah. you said the other day, Tom, something about that uh, you'd like to buy a little stock in the company, too. Well, yes, yeah, I want some of it. Well, I think you being president of the company, it'd look better if you owned some stock. Oh, yeah, I want all I can get. I just wished I had more cash to put into it. Well, the thing for you to do, Lum, is take the money that you make off the stock you sell and invest it right back in the company. First thing you know, uh, you'll be one of the big stockholders. Yeah, I could do that, I reckon. I was just thinking uh, you could endorse that check I just now gave you back over to me, and I'll make you out share the stock in the company for that amount. Well, the only thing, Squire, I'm a little short on cash right now. I was planning on using that money to live on for a spell. Yeah, well, uh, do as you like about it, Lum, but uh, the way that stock's going, I might decide any day to stop selling. I don't want to dispose of too much interest in the company, you know. I want to save some of it for myself. Yeah, natural, natural. And if I was to decide to stop all of a sudden, why, well, you'd be left without any stock at all. I'd like to see you get rich along with the rest of us, Lum. Yeah, I reckon maybe I better just endorse it off back over to you then. Yeah, so well, uh, just yeah. sign your name on the back there, and then I'll make out the amount of stock in your name. Well, recollect, Squire, I get that stock for 10% less than the other ones is getting there. 10%? Yeah, that's my commission for selling. That's what you promised to give me. Yes, but you didn't sell this, Lum. I'm the one that's making the sale myself. If any commission, well, I ought to get it. Well, I had myself already talked into it though before you brought it up. I know right when I sold myself. I was trying to sell Dick Cutterson some stock. He wouldn't buy none, but I, I give such a good argument in favor of it, I made up my mind right then. I was going to get some of it myself. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Lum, to show you that I want to do what's right. You say you sold yourself, and I'll say that I sold you. I'll just split the commission with you, give you 5% off. Five, huh? Yes, I want to do the right thing. Well, all right. Here. Here's your check. Yes, yes going to run me pretty short of cash, I'm feared, but I reckon I can get by all right as long as they keep having these parties and serving their face men. Well, it's better to deny yourself now, Lum, and live in luxury in uh, your old wait, age. Wait a minute, somebody at the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come in, come in. Well, howdy, Abner. Uh, howdy, Lum. <laughs> Hello, Squire. I've been looking everywhere if you look. Well, for uh, goodness sake, what in the world have you got on? Oh, oh, <laughs> this is a sport outfit. How you like it? Sport outfit? Yeah, see, I sort of represent all sports, except maybe football and baseball. What about that, Squire? I reckon uh, it'd look all right for me to carry a baseball bat or wear a mask or something like that, too. Yeah, you better wear a catcher's mask if you're going to wear that outfit out on a street lawn. You'll have a thousand fights less than you don't pay no attention to what folks says about you. Well, there may be a few comments, Abner, but Lum will have the satisfaction of knowing that he's properly attired. Yeah, anybody that laughs at this outfit is just showing their ignorance. 
Them leg years hanging out in me, Bridget, look like a pair of mop handles sticking out of a barrel. <laughs> now, listen, Abner, don't go too far with your talk. Yeah, how much would you charge to scarecrow a field? <laughs> Do which? Scarecrow a field. How big a field? Uh, Abner, if you don't shut up your mouth, I'm going to whop you on. If you just come over here to start a rucus, you can just get right out of here. Well, I never come over here because I wanted to, I'll tell you that. I don't know where you know it or not, but Professor Willoughby has got us singing a duet, he called it. Oh, that Geraldine Seastrunks is coming out party tomorrow night. Coming out party? Yeah, she's making a debut. Uh, that's what the professor called it. Uh, yes, a debut. That's a society term uh, where a single person uh, reaches age where they're eligible for matrimony. They have what they call a coming out party to announce to the public that they're ready for betrothal. Uh, ready for what spot? Betrothal to get married, now. Oh, they have one of them parties to let everybody know that uh, they would get married if somebody had asked them. Yes, yes, that's it, exactly. Oh, but that blame, I never heard of that before. Oh, yes, that's quite a common thing among the society well, folks. That's, that's just what I've been looking for. All right, grannies, I'm going to give a big coming out party for myself. Give me that check back, Squire. Uh, grannies, I'm going to make a debut that'll make them all set up and take notice. <laughs> and the... And the Society Notes will soon be reading Lum Edwards, one of Pine Ridge's most charming young debutantes. And now, mothers, a word about those children of yours. With no school during the summer, they are constantly out of doors playing and running about, on their feet for hours. They burn up an immense amount of energy. And it's no wonder they are always hungry and wanting to eat between meals. They're growing fast, and their little bodies demand extra nourishment. So don't deny those active youngsters when they ask for something to eat between meals. Here's the answer to your problem. Give them either a glass full of Horlicks or a few Horlicks tablets. Horlicks will satisfy their hunger and yet digest so quickly that their appetites will not be spoiled for their regular meal. Horlicks, you know, gives children the nourishment of full cream milk plus the energy value of wheat and malted barley. Children love its delicious flavor, so be sure to have Horlicks handy all the time. This is Carlton Brickard, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.